Hi, I'm Shivam. Hi, I'm Izzy. And this is Phoenix Chat. Where one of us can read. Which one? You, you find, find out. out. Hi, and welcome back to this episode of Phoenix Chat. This is part two of the episode we released a little bit earlier this week. I'd highly recommend you check out part one so you can understand the context for everything we're going to be talking about in this episode. Um, but yeah, getting right into the, the nitty gritty of it. Um, I think the first thing I want to talk about is just like, so this session had a, a lot of like, player-led content like mm -hmm. i i was actually like a uh, honestly anticipating to to start like the the hops um arc a little bit earlier but like we you ended up just kind of like uh filling that with some very interesting sorts of like character discussions and stuff like that um yeah no um i guess the the main thing i wanted to talk about was like how did you end up like bridging that conversation it's definitely like a tricky topic um of like you know one of the a player's characters not quite trusting a character yet and i think it ended up working out really really well and like the party's stronger as a whole because you had that scene but like um yeah how did you go about like facilitating that discussion i think it was really good that you just kind of like you you started the discussion then you just like step back so you know when i made juliet I thought a lot of things were not going to happen. Like, she's actually a really good mother. Like, I didn't think that was going to happen. She's actually a very good family therapist. What the fuck? I didn't think that was going to happen either. Things just kind of develop as we go here, okay? So, with this, I didn't know how this discussion was going to go, per se, because, like, I can't read each other's minds. I didn't know how it was going to go. So, I was like, okay, let's introduce the problem why there is a problem and have both sides make their points i was like okay i'm gonna be like fucking ace attorney here both of you can say <laughs> words and then they just started going at it and i'm like hmm i'm not gonna say words i'm gonna let them do it themselves and i'll just like go chill with hops and whatnot and plus i don't think i had like there was even a pause between the two for me to even say anything i was just kind of mm. like all right cool yeah cool. <laughs> That was oh, it, man. for me at least. I was just like, alright, cool. Um, hmm. But, like, there's been, like, with Boondock and Juliet especially, if, like, I know I keep bringing them up, but they have, like, such a weird, like, dynamic relationship. Uh, when when you have character arguments and, like, character, like, inconsistencies, not inconsistencies, but, like, uh, arguments like that, like how Juliet was right to steal the necklaces and Boondock was not, that was, that was a big thing, like, you know, like, we argued for that for a while. Um, it, it's just more so that we all communicate as, like, players and not our characters. Like, hey, we are not actually mad at each other. This just kind of needs to happen. Mm -hmm. So, as long as all of you have communication with each other, then it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Um, you know, I do really enjoy, by the way, like, the way this... It's a really organic discussion, like, um... Because literally, like, that one, like, scene with Essen where Essen just kind of, like, realized that Minerva was, like, a proper executioner and then, like, um, you know, started saying, like, you know, executioners, especially with his background, it made sense, like, he, he doesn't really like executioners, uh, especially the fact that he was one. Um, like, it, it was a really interesting discussion because, like, Boondock, like, um, feels like he is that and also like he takes great pride in being an executioner and stuff like that and it was just like it, it was one of those just like random moments in D D. it just kind of ended up just like randomly happening um and it, it created like a really like special moment because mm -hmm. of it um yeah. but yeah no it was really really good discussion I, again just like the the party feels a lot more cohesively together after that one now you know you can like trust us in a lot more especially yes. Boondock mm -hmm. <laughs> alright next topic I want to cover what did the Juliet weigh in tail oh my god alright listen I didn't know what I was going for in that moment yeah. in time so <laughs> I, I asked Shivan before this too like while we were writing our notes and stuff like wait I'm like 
what does the Juliet way entail? Because I don't even fucking know. When I play Juliet, I'm just in the headspace of like, <laughs> what are things she would do? Why would she do this? Like, I'm in her headspace. I don't know what the fuck's happening. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess actually more specifically, um, so let's say that Essen didn't tell you those things and everything was still like very murky and like muddy. What would you have done as Juliet if you'd gotten like maybe like all the way to the library and like you still just didn't really know? At that point, I feel like she would just have to be like point blank, like, look, dude, like, because when they went to the library, they were on a on a boat for a whole month, a mm. whole month. That would give them plenty of time. They're pinned to a boat. You have to fucking tell me now, or I swear to God, we are breaking up, and you have nothing to say about it, because you're not going to tell me anything, and I cannot be in a relationship where I cannot trust that person. So, yeah. either tell me now, or get the fuck out, because that's it. Like, I'm about, we're about to go die, and you can't even tell me who you are. Like, that's shit. That, that's just who she is. Like, she's a very blunt, point-blank person. Yeah. To some extent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, that, that makes sense, I guess. Um, it, it's harsh, but it definitely, like, it would make sense in that moment that if we went down, like, the worst possible path there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. But say that we still had some time before the library, and, like, you know, he still wasn't telling us, even though we keep, like, trying to question him. Because she's questioned him a couple times, like, before this conversation happened. Like, you know, where are you from? Like, who is it? You know, like, and he's still kind of, like, like, you know, skeeted around the fucking question. She would probably just, like, become what she normally does as a Canis Libertus leader. Or, not a leader, but, like, a a member. Just intel. Like, she would find out herself, I guess. Like, who are some connections that she knows that, like, is near that place? Or, like, she would ask Cass, or she would call in the Chaos Gremlins, or, like, ask a couple of favors of people that she probably, you know, has connections to that's probably the other way she would go around it yeah <laughs> um yeah no that's that's pretty interesting um i think the next thing i want to talk about then is um so the the real kicker of this session was kind of like the big reveal at the end there where like um you guys got like yeah you went through that like fight and everything like that and like um you managed to beat legion one time and she's now panicked and confused uh and just like flew out the window as you guys just like uh called her a fucking bitch um i and called so, her a like, fucking bitch yeah. specifically <laughs> yep and so it's from there like i i need to make her still just a very credible threat because you guys totally fucking like whooped her ass mm -hmm. um so i i had to make sure to really double down then like the threat now isn't like Legion is wanting to hurt um, the the guilds. It's now Legion's going to want to hurt you guys. So like, I guess what did you think about that whole reveal of like Legion just coming after you, like you as like a, a group now, not necessarily like the 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 the, 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 the guilds you're the a part of. The guilds, yeah. Mm -hmm. So when when Legion died first. I remember, like, I, yeah, we were happy at the beginning, and then I'm like, well, it's probably not over, because the soul is gone, and we read it in the little book saying, there's Legion, there's many. I'm like, okay, so this is not going to be anywhere near over. But when Legion started targeting us, I wasn't, cons like, me as Juliet wasn't concerned about myself. Like, she can come at me all she wants, I don't give a shit. Like, we're going to fight her regardless if she comes at us or not. Um... I was more concerned about the people I'm connected with. So, like, now that Legion has the memories of me, who can she attack? So she could easily go to the fucking Kitsune realm, because she knows where yeah. it is, and just kill everybody. Or mm. she knows how to get through the ends and ends of fucking Phoenix Heart and go kill Cass, and, you know, that would be another story. So, like, it wasn't necessarily I was concerned that she was attacking us specifically. It was just so... It was- I was concerned of how she could actually hurt us where it hurts most. Because I feel like we're- now that we defeated her once, she knows, like, okay, we are capable of fighting and, like, kicking her ass, but how can she, uh, like, get to us now? Does that make any sense? That's how I was yeah. thinking the whole time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. And then I also created some very interesting scenes, too, with, like, 
you trying to warn like you guys trying to warn like the people closest to you and being like hey just so you know like you know shit's kind of getting crazy here and i don't really know what's gonna happen so just mm-hmm. to, like you guys make sure to protect yourselves just any way you can from mm-hmm. some crazy things that have been happening um you know i, I also really like this too because like it really ramped up the stakes for you guys because like um a, a, the the problems were like personal. I think they for like really became like deeply personal to everyone after like you know everyone died. Um, yeah. But like from here, it, it's all going to be like extreme personal, and she's going to be coming at you as like hard as she possibly can like that. So like, yeah, yeah. just trying to ramp up the stakes of like, okay, this is the first thing she's done. She's now going to try to attempt to get crazier from here. So yeah, have fun with that, guys. <laughs> oh <Yay>. man. <laughs> yeah. I guess anything like you were expecting then after I kind of like I I've, I've already I, it was one of those things where like I felt a little bad because I definitely like um the the whole thing at Soleana that was like one of the roughest things I could have possibly done. Mm. Um and like from there I definitely had to kind of think about like okay, what, how do I, like, make sure to, like, th- th- her next scheme needs to be at least as crazy as that, or, like, right. um, some kind of, like, a, at least, like, big emotional stakes like that, and how do I, like, top that? So I guess, like, how, what were you thinking, like, as I kind of, like, ramped up the stakes and ratcheted up the tension? I deadass thought you were gonna have my mom team up with Legion. Hmm. Just to make her life a living fucking hell. That's exactly what I thought was gonna happen, and I'm like, man, this is gonna suck. Um, just yeah, like, man. not just my mom though, but like everybody's like, you know, personal enemy, like people of Lenore coming and kicking Essen's ass, like, mm. or like, uh, Boondock. Like, I know that we defeated the Salt Brothers and shit, so like that wouldn't be relevant, but like, maybe you know, more shit that he's done in the past, like, you know, because he was technically yeah. an executioner in Hope's Landing, um, so, like, all of those enemies coming and kicking his ass. Mm. Morgan, I think, was just there for the ride, man, like, ah, uh, <laughs> he was there to protect his family, like, people of, uh, Phoenix Heart, like, this is what he was told to do, and he's doing it. Because yeah, I don't, so I don't then... really know much about Morgan's past, I don't think he has a lot of enemies, so, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, I know. Uh, and then hops in her many, many enemies and her backstory, her... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the horrible yeah. things she's done. No. She's done, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Um. Oh, God. So, next thing I want to talk about is, uh, so the devil deal. Um, this is something I really had to think about because, like, um, yeah, so Boondock's player came up to me with the idea of, like, well, it's called the Devil's Hand. What if it had some crazy thing to do with, like, devils and stuff like that? If you were interested in, like, bringing that into the campaign. And so I'm like, okay, I'll try to, like, work with that. I see. I can probably do something with, like, packs and stuff like that. Because he also expressed to me the idea, too, like, maybe I might multi-class into Warlock, and this would be, like, a cool way to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so uh, I was basically like, yeah, no, so we'll try and, like, uh, work something out, like, then with you. And I started, like, with this, but, um... I had to do it a very specific way, because, like, from the get-go, of course, like, Boondock's player was going to play Boondock as extremely, like, suspicious. Even if, like, the the devil said that they were, like, uh, they they helped, um, Boondock's father. Um, it it would need to be done in a very specific way in order for it to work. Mm -hmm. So, uh, my plan was I was going to create a deal that's too good to be true, and currently, like, uh, and I'll explain a little bit more in, like, some future episode, like, the the deal was extremely good and basically like the the contract itself had no consequences and it had to be that because like in order for especially boondock to think about accepting it boondock needs to trust the devil Mm -hmm. um because boondock thinks with their gut not their head so if the devil just acts perfectly nice and like there's no sort of like uh suspicious sort of things and they're just like trying to like you know uh be, be very friendly to boondock um then Boondock would eventually, hopefully, just, like, the, the, if, if, like, uh, the devil gained Boondock's trust, like, that would be it. Um, that would be, like, the, the moment where, like, uh, I could execute phase two, which, uh, I'll also get into later. (laughs) Oh, man. 
phase two, you say. Yes. <laughs> There's too many phases. That's too, oh, too man. many. <laughs> oh, man. Speaking of, like, um, fiends, though, um, <laughs> I guess so first of all, like, I, I think you were also pretty excited about the idea of, like, putting some devils into there, because, like, <laughs> that seems for sure, like, a good mistake Juliet could make where you were like, oh, fuck, I can fuck up Juliet, huh? Yeah. Dude. Yeah, I will tell you, though, straight up, like, if you had decided to, like, really go down that path, like, there's no way it wouldn't have ended up with, like, Juliet oh, yeah. dead or, Probably. like, or worse yet, like, other people, uh, having some major consequences to mm-hmm. I think like um because the devils like they would have gone for you but like they'd easily tried to like you know like uh gone to like hops or like a sin instead mm-hmm. like yeah. fuck <laughs> um <Oopsie. laughs> but I didn't yeah. it's fine it's fine Everything yeah it's fine. fine it's fine um but speaking of fiends uh, I want to talk about like some differentiations like uh, between like celestials and fiends because like I think at this point especially with like so, Juliet, first of all, being a Celestial, and Boondock now being a Fiend, we have, like, a lot of, like, the Celestial culture versus, like, Fiend culture in the campaign. <laughs> um, and I also like the idea, too, like, Juliet seems like she'd be a Fiend, and Boondock seems like he'd be a Celestial, huh? Yeah, and we didn't even plan that. It's just kind of, you know, stars collided, you know? Yeah, it worked out really well. I really like that. Like, it, it was it's it's just a really good dichotomy of these characters. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, um, I guess the main like difference between them that we've like kind of like showcased so far is like the, the dream communication. Um, so, fiends can only basically bring like spirits to them. Uh, and that's the main way that they, like, communicate, uh, for example, like, with Boondock, for example, they brought Boondock's spirit, uh, to where the devil was, um, and that's how they ended up talking. For Celestials, like, in Ariokami, though, um, they, of course, can bring a spirit to themselves, but, like, because, uh, Celestials are more inclined to, like, ask people, others for help, and, like, uh, be able to, like, persuade people to, like, willingly accept these sort of things, um, they can bring spirits to themselves, as well as, like, for example, forest animals that are willing. Um, so, like, for, for Juliet, um, uh, ha- having her, um, visions and stuff like that, that's why you're able to, like, be in fox form for a little bit. Um, you know, and that was probably one of the most, like, interesting dichotomies, and, like, I'm looking forward in the future to, like, doing more things with the whole like celestials versus fiends theme because like i think at this point it's a pretty big like theme of the campaign yeah <laughs> um and besides the Mario Kami, i don't think we had a lot of like celestial culture so like we'll, we'll see if i end up bringing a little more of that in there <laughs> hmm. oh man um yeah you have anything else you want to talk about should we head out to the outro um maybe like one thing, uh, so a, a lot of, like, I so I work at a coffee shop and I, you know, explain to some of the peeps who work there and they, you know, give you their feedback and stuff like that. Like, um, a lot of them, they're kind of like, they're questioning about, like, the whole celestial versus fiend thing. They're like, wait, so, like, are they angels or are they just spirits? Like, what are they exactly? And, like, mm-hmm. Juliet's a kitsune, so she's not exactly like an angel. She's just more of like a. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I... She's just like a. We play mostly on. We base this a lot off of uh, what kitsune is from, and that's Japanese mythology. So we mm. just kind of like warped that into this campaign. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just um, wanted to explain that yeah. part. She's not an angel in yeah. any way, shape, or form. I, I think how I he wanted to explain is like there, there's like tears for example so like um for on like the celestial side of things like uh like fey animals and stuff like that or like uh certain amounts of like small like forest creatures and stuff like that they'd probably be at like the the bottom rung of like the celestials mm-hmm. um uh, and, like, on the fiends, for example, like, you know, like, imps and, like, uh, tiny little, like, fiendish creatures like that, they'd be on, like, the bottom side, like, the, the fiendish creatures. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, 
for like Boondock, for example, and you, Julia, you both being like the middling sort of like um, of, of fiends and uh, celestials. Um, and as for like the the more classical images of celestials, like angels and stuff like that, and like um, the and, and Ariokami and like the the gods and stuff like that, that would probably be more like the the top of the celestials, and then like devils, demons, the really powerful fiendish creatures at the top and the more, like, fiendish tree. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's more like a hierarchy. Um, so, like, e, for example, Cass is descended from angels, um, and, like, you and Cass have, like, a, a very... Your you, you're place on the totem pole there, so to speak, is very similar. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, like, you, you're more, like, descended technically from Celestials rather than, like, a, a full-blown, like, angelic creature, so to speak. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, so that's the, the, the dichotomy there. Mm, okay. Cool. I just wanted to put put out that that out for clarification because I feel like <laughs> stuff like this, whenever like in uh, in any D and D campaign, like this kind of like you know hell versus angel stuff, or like mm-hmm. you know the tiers of like power on different like NPCs and like everything else like outside worlds, because like a lot of D and D has to do with like religion and gods and stuff, like you know warlocks, yeah. clerics, everything. So it's re- you gotta you gotta set that in stone mm-hmm. at least like kinda in the beginning, otherwise we're all gonna be like, wait, how yeah. powerful is this god of cheese, you know? Like, does he, w- <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Yeah, no. Um, and I think on top of that too, like, um, th- this is of course, like, only the rules that I use for, like, my campaigns and specifically the Phoenix Heart setting. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, no, like, uh, th- there's definitely a lot of other people who have taken this in, like, multiple other directions and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Um, I just feel like that that lore and that explanation works best for mine, especially considering, like, um, we- we've added Kitsune and stuff like that into, like, the Celestial Tree. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I feel like that works out much better than, yeah. like, the, this, the more standard, like, uh, quote-unquote, like, canon descriptions uh, mm-hmm. from, like, D&D lore. Mm-hmm. Um, you know... <laughs> Yeah, shout out to the coffee shop peeps for that question. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, that's it. Now I'm done. Cool. Um, yeah, thank you guys so much for listening to an episode of Phoenix Chat. Uh, shout out to our patrons, uh, the Mod Goth, Spicy Turntable, and NyQuil Dreamer. You guys help us make more and better content. And if you guys out there listening want to become a Patreon member, uh, the link is in the description of this video. Um... If you decide to help support us, you can help check out the um, previews of our Order animatic, which, uh, yeah, no, it should be a D&D comedy series, which I'm really excited to show to you guys eventually, and we're really starting to, to, to make some good progress on it, which should be awesome to, to show you guys. Um, yeah, is you want to plug our Twitch? Yeah, so every Tuesday, 2.30 CST, 3.30 EST on Twitch, if you look at Keeper of Kitsune, we are Twitch streaming our Eluna Knights campaign, and you can see Indigo and his many fucking exes, because he's a hoe. Uh, anyway, fun fact of the day, um, Morgan, when he was younger, couldn't go to summer camp because he was working with his dad. His dad wouldn't let him go. He was working. Mm. We don't like the pirate man. Okay, Phoenix chat! Yay! (laughs)